Yeah. If you don't support ICE, you don't support anything. That's right. I've heard a whole lot. I don't support ICE. I'm just going to go ahead and say that right now. This <laughs> stuff is always a minor step. Mike, whatever, Mike, Mike, whatever. Mike. The first step you take is always a minor step in whatever direction you're going to go. So a welcoming city is the first step toward a sanctuary city. Um, I've worked up Larry Hart, 11806 Wilson Street, Ravenna Township. Um, I want to thank you guys for serving. I would not sit in any one of your seats for any of my amount of money. Uh, thank you for serving. We may not agree, but I respect you for serving. Um, you are definitely in the hot seat, and I guess in some ways you should be. Uh, this is a, a difficult issue. Uh, I would suggest, that now that this has gone back to committee, would you please study some of these big sanctuary cities and find out the kind of situations that are going on there. Did you, one of the ladies met, uh, mentioned the mess that's on the streets. I'll tell you what, in some of these sanctuary streets, you better watch where you stop because they're a mess. Um, this is not a racial issue. This is an immigration issue. When we came in the building here, I didn't have to strip, but I took a lot of stuff off to get through the metal detector. You have entrance requirements for this building. Um, goodness, uh, I can't think of any other place where there are no rules for entry. If we don't have any borders, we don't have a country. Uh, borders are here for a reason. Immigration laws are here for a reason. We've met people who come into this country, therefore we know what kind of people we're getting. Castro was sending a lot of people on boats to this country, and he was dumping people out of his prisons onto these boats to get rid of them. We have people coming up out of Mexico, for example, that are La Raza. They are MS-13, and they're coming up with people who legitimately are oppressed and need help. But what I've seen at the border is people with cell phones you, Larry. and they're you very on. well fed. Next I have Robert Smith. My name is Alice Boomer. I live at 2852 Van Inberg Road in Muskegon. Um, this is my first foray into this type of environment and I'm a little overwhelmed. But I also must say I am very saddened and disappointed in the way that this has been conducted. I wish that all of you had a conscience that would look beyond your own self-interest and to those that you propose to be serving and you are not. There is an exception, I have to say, and I'm very proud, I'm very proud. My family members are of the military. They have fought, died, and served this country to protect my freedom and the freedom of everyone in this room and everyone in this country. I do not wish to have their sacrifice be in vain. And it is my personal opinion that all sanctuary cities in the United States are a slap in the face to all of the brave men and women who have worked very hard to come to the world. And I please ask all of you to search your hearts to make the right decisions for this country. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Robert Smith, out of the 1664 Division. Um, first off, I'm very disappointed in this board for a number of reasons. You guys knew what was going to happen today. You knew you had a hot topic, a very hot topic. You made no effort whatsoever to make accommodations for the people who you serve to have their say. Amen. And then to pull it at the last second because the majority of the people here were against what you want to do is just beyond belief too. And then to have the board sit here and vote not to support law enforcement. I think every one of you that voted no should be replaced. There was no vote. You, the effort, the thing was called and nobody would support it. And every one of you who would not support, it's the same difference. Every one of you who would not support law enforcement should be replaced. Amen. You guys all took an oath. 
compelled to uphold the laws of our county, our state, and our country. If you can't do that, then vacate the office and give it to somebody who can. Amen. I'm disabled. I don't work for a living anymore, so I got lots of time to support anybody who will run against you people. Thank you. Gloria Garner. Gloria Garner. She's coming. 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 She's and the contractor Midwest Builders botched the whole job. I gotta sit at night with a gun on the couch because he chose to put a bathroom door lock on a main dump. Um, contractor left a hole in my basement window. I had to plug it with steel wool to keep rats from getting in my house. Uh, I've been getting a runaround until the city broke it down to me and let me know that that was a county. Anita Bailey stepped in as of March. She came to my house. It took him a whole year to find a contractor. She came to my house with that contractor. He sat in my home. Oh, I'm gonna make it real quick, great. I went to Tim Burgess. I wrote him a letter. And every time Tim Burgess come or talk, you get nowhere. Uh, they haven't seen the contractor. But you paid him 8600 for him to run off and leave my home like it is, I need help. And I refuse for another year like this. <coughs> Something's got to be done. I have no protection on that door. Thank you. Thank you, Gloria. We'll, we'll have somebody to get some contact with you. Next day, John Anderson. John Anderson. John Anderson. Okay. Next, I have John. Next, I have Mitchell Durin. Mitchell Durin, 1391 West Virginia. And for all these reasons you have already heard and will hear more of, I uh, do not uh, I, I pray that you will not vote this resolution in the Muskegon County and we do not want to become a sanctuary county or state which will probably lead to it if you go the road if you, if you're traveling. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Tudor Dixon. I live at 6912 Windflower Way. And I would ask that if you have been told that this is not a sanctuary program, that maybe you have all been duped and not read welcomingmichigan.org very clearly. Because this is exa exactly what a sanctuary city is. And if you are believing that this reduces crime, you're wrong and you have no tangible data to give us about that. But I will ask you all to meet with the families in the United States that have lost loved ones because of illegal alien crime. I have met with over 20 of them, over 20 of thousands of them. And they have lost family members permanently, permanent separation, permanent pain. This is mostly people who were illegal aliens who had already been deported, already had DUIs, and they killed them when they were driving drunk. Many DUIs protected under policies like this one we're talking about today in Muskegon. Many DUIs leading to the one that killed their loved one and then they ran and they dragged their bodies along the road. They dragged, this is, you, you want to talk to them? I'm telling you, talk to these families. They can't drive down streets in their communities. Do you want our family members to not be able to drive down streets where their parent, their children were dragged for miles? Miles, they were dragged a little bit. The person was trying to get away because they are illegal. These people commit crimes 
because they are illegal. These policies call those people to these areas to protect them. We are asking you to protect American citizens, to protect our community, to prevent this from happening. When you ask our police stations, our police officers, not to comply with ICE, that is unconstitutional. When you make that request, it is unconstitutional. You are not allowed to do that. You do not have that power. That is not allowed in this community. You do not, you do not, you do not overrule the Constitution. Mary Lou Nitz. Mary Lou Nitz. <laughs> My name is Mary Lou Nitz, Mrs. Carl Nitz. I live at 1361 Anna Road, North Muskegon, Michigan. All I can say is if you pass this resolution, God help you and God help our city because it is so wrong in so many ways. My husband served in the military. My father served in the military. What is, it, what is this doing to our country? If, you, if you're if you illegal, fine, come on in. That's how my family came over. You know, they were born here. They were born in Ireland and Germany and Scotland. But if you're legal, fine, come on, we help you. But when you're illegal, you get all the freebies that the government can hand out to you. My husband don't get a free nothing. He had to fight for his VA, and he's a born American citizen. My children don't qualify for nothing because their father is a white, educated male. We don't qualify for nothing, but if you're an illegal alien, by God, you can come and get grants to get a quickie shop on the end of the corner. Go to Detroit. All your gas stations and quickie stores are run by aliens. And then they come in here and steal from us. So they can take, my brother works at a government building in Detroit. He says, they bring your food stands to Muskegon and Grand Rapids and Lansing, cash them, and then sell them in the quickie stores for 100% profit because we let them in and we give them the helping hand that they're supposed to be needing. But what about us? We are American-born citizens and we pay taxes. And by God, if you don't let up our police department, our sheriff's department stand up for our rights, then you're all wrong. And when they start breaking into your homes and ruining your constitutional rights, then you'll know how we feel. Dennis Witham. Dennis Witham. Dennis Witham. Dennis Witham. Lyle Williams. Lyle Williams. He's gone. How about Dennis Witham? There's Dennis Okay, how about Carl Nitz? Carl Nitz. Carl Nitz. Hi, Carl Nitz, uh, 1361 Anna. Um, uh, going against this whole sanctuary city or welcoming city, however you want to call it. Um, I deployed to, to Honduras, I deployed to uh, Saudi Arabia. I've seen a lot of these people. I, you're opening a whole can of, of something you don't want to close. You can't close fast enough. This is wrong entirely. And anybody that supports it should be removed from this commission. Martha Dillon, I'm sorry. I've lived overseas for a number of years. Just state your name and address, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Martha Dillon, 207 Robinwood Drive. Um, I've, I lived for a number of years overseas. I've worked with people of a lot of different ethnic and racial groups. I have nothing against them. But I do have something against about accepting illegal, undocumented. It's a matter of semantics. It's all the same thing. We are a country of law. And when we start, I, I too am shocked that there was not one person here willing to second the motion that ICE should be supported. Not one of you would second it. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm speechless. Aren't we here to support our laws, our government? We have kids coming in from villages with diseases that are being brought into the schools because they've never been vetted. We don't know where they come from. We don't know their backgrounds. They're uneducated. 
They don't know how to have any kind of interaction with people like us. We're looking at so many problems that affect our children in school, adults. Um, it's a sanctuary city, no matter what you call it. We are welcoming. Why do we need a rule to be welcoming when we already are? Unless you're thinking that, okay, we're going to welcome them with the food stamps. We're going to welcome them with the Medicare. We're going to welcome them with housing. We're going to welcome them with all these other things. No. When people have been vetted properly, they have people sponsor them so they find jobs. They help them get started. They are a community to surround them. That's the way it's supposed to be done. Not just kind of let them, oops, not just let them come in and they, they don't know what to do, they don't know where to go, they don't know what our laws are, and they try to get a driver's license, they don't know what they're supposed to do, and somebody gets killed. Thank you, Martha. And next I have Larry Gardner after Vicki. Vicki Goss, 3466 through Vail Road, Montague, Michigan. Back in 1982, I contacted our state reps over my concern that women were coming up to Michigan from beyond our borders to have their babies so that they could stay in the country without being deported. A friend of mine from another country in the Middle East was coming on back into Michigan to visit a relative. Um, she, would, she could have stayed, she had a green card. The lady sitting next to her in the plane asked her that this other lady was a foreign lady from this other country, asked her where to go immediately to get on welfare. Okay, I've worked in a school. Kids in school come. Um, they come here on a temporary basis. They get all kinds of help. You have to provide psychologists. You have to provide a social worker. You excuse me, have to provide tutors for them. You have to do all of this at taxpayers' expense. And these kids leave on the weekends or in the middle of the night or whatever and take their supplies with them. So we can't afford that. One boy um, who had been in trouble, he was an illegal boy, came across the border, was told if he spent a certain amount of time not getting in trouble, he could, he could go to this college of his choice Free. I have a granddaughter that owes $100,000 for her college. I have another granddaughter that has multiple uh, tuition grants. And I even have a daughter that still owes. And you can imagine her age is not real young. So that's another thing to consider. Last thing I want to tell you is we have cities in Michigan already where the people have immigrated and, and they go to one area. We have areas where we could not walk into that city unless we are of their religion. We're in the United States. I'm against this whole thing, but I welcome legal. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Oh, that Larry Gardner. Larry Gardner. Sandy Kim. Thank you, Commissioners, for this opportunity to speak with you. Um, I would like to ask you to carefully consider how allowing illegal immigrants, giving them immunity from abiding by our laws, would affect our, the safety and the financial stability of our county. Many people have stated this already, and I'm just going to reiterate what they've said about that. Please allow ICE to do its job. Please allow the Sheriff's Department to keep our county safe. Thank you. John Bartz. Bartz. I'm sorry, John Bartz. John Bartz. Next up, we're going to have Don Maninsky. Don Maninsky. Hi, I'm John Bartz, 2816 Green Ridge Avenue, North Muskegon. Uh, what I have to say is only directed towards those that come here illegally. Not the legals, it's fine. So the ideas that I have, it's a slap in our face as law-abiding Americans to allow them to come in illegally. The word illegal. 
that's the bottom line to me. Illegal. If I do something wrong, I'm going to pay the piper and go to jail. What makes it any different for them other than they've come here illegally and we want to give them everything that we have for free. Also, you can't, not you necessarily, we can't control the violence in our areas now, let alone the way it's going to escalate against people who already are here illegally that don't have any problems with not following our laws. Once they get here, it's going to escalate. You're going to have a major problem, especially if the police and others can't do a thing about it. Uh, also, increased cost to the county, the cities that use our facilities, our jails, our hospitals, police departments, higher taxes, it's going to fall on all of us, not them, us. So if you pay taxes, your taxes will go up too. We have a double standard that will be set if we allow this, because we are law-abiding citizens. They are not. And of course, if their crimes can't be brought to the forefront, it'll never be taken care of. Puts each of our county residents in increased risk of being a victim of proven increase in violence. And what we're doing in America right now is making good, evil, and evil good. Thank you for your time. Don Munsky. 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 I got a bag down there. How about Barbara Colin? Colin? Barbara Colin? Barbara Colin? Yeah, that one. Yeah. I got that one. Barbara Colin? Uh, I don't think that Mr. Colin or Munsky are here. How about Colleen Ware? Thank you. Actually, you guys want to let me out? Colin Ware? Colin Ware? Oh, if you let me out, let me out. We just went by your office. I got it from the City Commission meeting. We're live. We're live in half an hour. Colin Ware, 1389 Dykstra Road. Um, the word illegal, not according to or organ authorized by law, unlawful. Melissa, not sanctioned by official rules. People seem to forget the word illegal and make it legal. I don't understand. Um, Muskegon's always been a welcoming community. I've lived in Muskegon County all my life. I've never known anybody to say it wasn't. Immigrants built this county. And but to bring illegals in and to play a name game with what's going on here is wrong. Um, I come from a military family. I have two children, grandchildren, a granddaughter and grandson in the Middle East right now. And, and I, they're fighting for us. And to let people come in here that are against us and want us to change our laws to fit them before immigrants came in and assimilated to our country, our ways of life. And it's not happening anymore. When you come in illegally, they seem to want to change it. So like the woman said, we can't walk into their community, but they can walk into ours anytime they want. And it's not right, it's not fair, um, and I'm behind you 100% on ICE. I should be helped by the police, the sheriff's department, police department. This is just wrong. To, I'm shame on all of you that wouldn't second it. Shame on all of you. Mary? And Kelly Murphy is next. Hello, so my name is Nan Grubey. I live at 2593 Crozier Avenue here in Muskegon. I'm going to share my opinion and then read a little bit of an article that was published September 5th of this year from Judicial Watch. Um, 
I just had cataract surgery. <laughs> I used to. <laughs> so, in any case, um, it is a stepping in the wrong direction. Uh, I believe Muskegon County is a wonderful, welcoming place, has been and always will be. I don't even think we need a motion to say that we're welcoming, but we need to welcome legal <laughs> folks and for the same reasons that you heard before. I love this place, and others will too if they come in in the right direction and with the right support. We can only manage to carry so much weight on our shoulders. So, all right, that's my opinion. <laughs> and as far as the ice, that's what this pertains to. Um, in Baltimore, there was a murder of an uh, American citizen. Six of the seven young people that did the murder were illegal aliens, and they were from the gang MC-16. MC um, I get nervous. MS-13, sorry. So they were confirmed <coughs> as illegals and from that group. Uh, long designated as a transnational criminal organization by the United States government. Last year, ICE removed nearly 6,000 gangbangers from that county, including 1,332 from MS-13. Um, it is going in, going in the wrong direction from the previous year. It is up 24% increase. Please save us. Kelly Murphy, I live on Twin, Twin Lake on First Street, and I want to follow up with what she had to say about the uh, murder in Maryland. There's been eight rapes now by illegals, undocumented illegals that ICE has turned their back on because they're not allowed to go after them or the police uh, won't inform them that they're out there running around. They've had all these uh, rapes and murders going on. And also, I want to know if this, and, and this is turning going to be like a sanctuary city thing. You can say welcoming all you want, but it's going to end up being that. And I'm wanting to know if it's got anything to do with Muskegon being named as one of the top ten counties or con cities in the country that's going to name the next president. Uh -huh. oh. That's my concern. They want to bring and flood this county with illegals, and that's going to lead to voter fraud, oh and it's going to be a big problem. <laughs> <laughs> I also want to say that it, it should be illegal if it's not that ICE doesn't cooperate or that the police department doesn't cooperate with ICE. That's just wrong. That's just wrong because it's putting these rapists and murders that have been reported or supposed to be deported right back on the streets to keep re, uh, keep committing these crimes that they've committed time and time again. And we want we want our sheriff's department, our police department to work with ICE. And then I have Mary Hedden. Hendon, Mary Hendon, Michael Sandin. <laughs> what about Mary Hendon? Mary Hendon. Mary Hendon. Okay. Um, Daryl or Deborah Hartman? Daryl or Deborah Hartman. Daryl or Deborah Hartman? Some of these have written notes on there, so I'm thinking maybe they stay, they just wrote a note. Um, Gerald Vanderland? Gerald Vanderland? Okay, here we go. Gerald, okay, could you please state your name and address and limit your comments to yes. My name is Gerald Robert Vanderland. I live at 415 Gardner, Muskegon Township. Uh, first and foremost, I want to hope the board remembers that the Constitution was made for all, and it doesn't say for only citizens, it's for all. It doesn't restrict aliens, illegal or otherwise, so the laws that our forefathers made are good ones, and it's not for any of us to take a shallow excuse for trying to solve our big problems by just throwing the doors open to anybody. 
and I would expect more of the board to dig deep, dig hard, support our laws and our public officials, our police, and do what they're supposed to do. And if we just bring in good industry, good people will come. Pay them good jobs, good money, people will come. We don't have to kick the doors open and just take it to get free, cheap labor. That's it, my time. I'll Thank you very much. Do my time the next one if we can do it. Thomas Rome. <laughs> Thomas. How about Brett Andrew Alexander? Brett Alexander. Michael Gould. <laughs> my name's uh, Mike Gould. Um, I live at 809 Clark Street, Muskegon, Michigan, uh, 49542. Um, I've been a lifelong resident of Muskegon Township for my entire life. Um, I really do like some of the stuff that's going on, the development of downtown. Um, I just believe that this subject of this kind of magnitude shouldn't be up to a board of committee members making this decision. This should be a countywide vote. This, this isn't like... Um, I know we don't vote on everything, but this isn't like, you know, hey, let's put new street lamps up on Western. This is a huge, huge, huge idea. And I've never understood why the state, the city, this country, we can't even take care of our own people. We want to start taking care of other people that aren't even here legally. Just, I'm embarrassed to live in this town sometimes. City of Muskegon, Muskegon Heights, how many killings have we had in the last month? 16 year old died trying to protect his little sister at a birthday party. An 18-year-old got shot in the head by a family dollar. Why don't we put those resources into protecting our citizens, our kids, our youths, do more after-school programs, stuff like that, instead of helping out people that can't even come here legally. I have no problem with people coming here legally. None whatsoever. It's, it's getting really sad now that in... I hate to say it, but most undocumented Im uh, immigrants, they vote a certain way. And everyone knows that they vote they blue. They can't vote. They can't vote. <laughs> <laughs> this is, this is a political play. I mean, can any board member say why this is a good idea to do this? Thanks. Thank you, Mike. Dana Cooper? How about Kenneth DeVere? All right, we'll move on. Let's see here. We've got Nate Mould. Nate? How about P. Eckland? I live at 822 South Wolfley Road. Um, it's kind of a couple of questions. Um, if we become a welcoming city or AKA Sanctuary County, who are we going to be letting in? Where are they coming from? You know, are they coming from Mexico? Are they coming from Somalia? Are they coming from um, China? Where are they coming from? Are they, are they illegal? Is that who's coming in? Is that who you want to welcome in as illegal? Wait, this is a this is a public comment time. It's not a question and answer. And then my second um, comment would be: in Baldwin, they're housing 1,800 illegal immigrants. Now, once they let them out, they serve their time. If we're a welcoming county, they're going to come here. So I'm just concerned about that. So, and to the heckler in the back about uh, not being able to vote if you're illegal. Yes, you can because I have an experience with someone I know in my past that was a legal immigrant here that made false IDs, driver's mm -hmm. licenses. So yeah, they can. And that's all you need to use to vote is a driver's license ID. And they can vote, so thank you. Jamie Ferenz, thank you very much. Jamie. <laughs> Next I have Pat Vendel. Commissioners, I personally believe in the humane treatment of all people. I believe that there must be immigration reform sooner than later 
but I do not favor the steps to make Muskegon County a welcoming county, which leads to a sanctuary county. Entering the U.S. illegally is a crime regardless of the circumstances. Cities, counties, states that provide sanctuary to illegal immigrants protect all of them regardless if they're honorable or criminal from arrest and deportation. This enables criminals and prevents law enforcement officers from carrying out their duties, making law enforcement guilty of obstructing justice. It encourages illegal immigration as acceptable and devalues legal immigration. The selective disrespect for law puts a burden on the taxpayers who are forced to pay the bill. And if we're a welcoming county, why do we need a resolution? Please find a better way to help those who are in this country illegally to take the appropriate actions to earn their U.S. City citizenship. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You have to pet a Jerry Wildrum. Is Jerry here? Jerry Wildrum? Hi, I'm Pat Bendel. I'm at, uh, my address is 3826 at Woodland in North Shores. Um, I'm a little confused about all of this. Um, we weren't able to hear a lot from outside, but from the little bit I've um, read about it, mostly on social media, but I was able to find an article today on Fox 17 about oh. it. And um, it's, it's a little confusing because from what I read of the resolution that's posted online, it, it says, um, whereas all people, including immigrants, are respected and valued and are vital to our shared prosperity, um, it, it um, doesn't really list any issue we have to correct. So I'm not sure what the resolution would accomplish or, or why it's even needed. Um, the thing that I found really odd also, um, reading the article on um, Fox News, um, it's interesting. Um, they're call we're calling it a, what are we calling it? Uh, we're, we're welcoming, a welcoming county. Um, and the, the headline of the article reads, Muskegon County Tables Resolution to Become a Welcoming County. Um, and it goes on to say that um, the person that I think wrote the resolution, Marsha Hovey Wright, had to add um, the word legal in it to make it bipartisan to get support. Um, but the thing that I found odd is that her, the comments they're quoting her as having made are, this has nothing to do with sanctuary cities. That was made up. And um, then she, they went on to quote her. And, and maybe they're not quoting accurately, but what it says is, that's accurate, that they go on to say, um, adding the word legal to the resolution takes a lot of power out of it. So I, I didn't understand what that meant if it was a um, Thank you very much, Pat. Next I have Marcia Follett. Oh, Jerry, Jerry, I don't think Jerry's here. Marsha Follett. I don't think Marsha's here either. Okay. How about Bill Johnson? <coughs> Bill Johnson? Okay. I'm moving right along here. Let's see. Um, Mia Light? Okay. Um, next I have Deborah Smith. Okay, how about Donald Van Hoovering? Oh, we got one. Oh, that one? Okay. Miss Light. Miss Light? Okay. And then I have Donald Van Hoovering, I think. Van Hoovering? Van Hoovering. Would you state your name and address and limit your comments to two minutes, please? Um, my name is Mia Light. I am homeless. My mother uh, wanted to sell our house and some people uh, convinced my very elderly mother, I think, that to, part of selling the house was evicting me. I lived with her since 1992 after being hurt on the job. Um, 
and someone who I've known for many years took me in for I think it was a few days and then a loving couple um, took me in lately and I've been staying with them. Um, I don't know how I'm supposed to address you, Honorable Commissioner, whatever. Yeah. But thank you for being in your positions and for being here and listening to us. Um, Jesus Christ, the Lord God Almighty, our Creator, the one who had us come into existence, not only every man, male and female, but also he made the governments and we're all here to obey him only and totally for his pleasure and he is god he is love he wants us to love and that is by obeying him and um he wants us to do what he wants decently and in order i know that in this city there are homeless people I've seen people out on the street. I've talked to people. People need food, <coughs> water, housing, medicine, medical help, um, jobs that are pleasing to God so people can make money. And those who can't work need to be taken care of. We need to go decently and in order. We need to take care of our own and then organize um, if the Lord will. And Thank you, Mia. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Next, I have Joe Bush. <laughs> well, that was uh, a very fine sermonette. Uh, I'm a minister, and I have to give credit to the last speaker. She really laid it on the line. Uh, this is a difficult day. Your mission, I sense, is urgently needed. You are listening. That's very critical in this community. And your, miss, your mission is to help us to come together as a people. Uh, recent history, we faced issues here. Uh, there was a threat to our civility, to the children, with violent images being presented some three years ago. And we came up with the word, love lives here. The Rotor Rotarians led us all in that. Social media today posted by one commissioner, the voices that we hear from that post are a minority in this community. I encourage you to be patient. Many, many other people will speak with you and to you and collaborate together. We are a county of nearly 200,000 citizens. For many of us, our life has been formed by the life of Jesus and other religious leaders. All of us know that in our hearts. And we know what it means to welcome the stranger, the one who is disregarded by others. That's basic to our ethic, our ethic as a community. And you don't have to stand up for those values, but you must advocate for the caring for people. Today we have heard from many, many fearful people it's amazing. Thank you very much. So I call you to live to the Good priority of inclusion. Thank you. Thank you. Joe? Yes, I have Gary Kill. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for being here this afternoon. Uh, my name is Joe Bush. My address is 4090 Brayburn in Norton Shores, Michigan. Uh, I would like to say, I, I think that uh, Commissioner Foster is right. I don't think this is a, a party issue. I think this is a what's right for Muskegon County issue. And as much as we politicize it, what's right for Muskegon County is that we stand as part of the state of Michigan, part of the United States of America. We follow the laws of the county. We follow the laws of the state. We follow the laws 
of the nation. And a nation uh, without borders is not a nation. A nation without laws is not really a nation. And we remember the words of John Adams that, that essentially that if, if you were a nation of laws, not men, and if we are going to just change our, our ethos or our policy uh, to say that we're welcome, we've already been welcome. Uh, I'm a uh, third generation Muskegonite. Uh, my family emigrated from Czechoslovakia four generations ago, and uh, they came here legally. Uh, I have compassion for those who come thousands of miles trying to get into the United States illegally. Unfortunately, that's not the right way to do it. We all know that. And as much as we have compassion for those people, and we want to treat them with love, it's not fear that causes us to do that. It's respect, because if we don't respect our laws, soon we will have none. And it, all it takes is a little bit. It's like a trickle of water. It will erode over time, and soon we'll be a lawless nation. We'll be a lawless county, and we will be overrun with our own problems out of our own compassion. So I urge you, just be respectful of the laws that you all have honored so far, and I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Eric Hill. Eric Hill, 3419 Butler Drive, Norton Shores, Michigan. Ladies and gentlemen, thank, thank you for letting me speak here today. Um, kind of tough to follow Joe Bush because he kind of parallels everything that I've got to say to you today. We are a nation of laws. You are aboard. If you want to make laws, run for U.S. Congress. Run for the Senate. Make the laws. Don't make them here. Follow the laws because we are a nation of laws. If we are a lawless society, we have nothing. I feel for people that want a better life. I won the geocentric lottery by being born an American citizen, and I don't take that lightly. Neither do the, com the people that have died on the battlefield. Okay? They fought for our Constitution. They fought for the laws. You need to follow them. Um, the other thing that I would like to say is, would you please give a definition at some point of what a welcoming county is, and specifically what's its function? Have a great day. Thank you very much. <laughs> Nedra? Nedra? Nedra, okay. Sorry, I slaughtered your name. <laughs> That's okay. Um, my name is Nadra Buckholtz, and my address is 1516 Palmer Avenue. And I agree with much of what's been said by the last three I've listened to. And I'm sorry I couldn't be in for the whole meeting. Um, there was quite a crowd at the door, so I had to wait outside. But I also want to say that as one as a citizen I always felt that the ski and I was born here um, 72 years ago and I have always felt that Muskegon was an, a welcoming community and we've welcomed all kinds of people from all different ethnic groups and all different religions and and I love love them all um, I don't always agree with them all and I but that you know I have that right I don't agree with everybody but the people that I still love. And I agree that we are a nation of laws and a county of laws. And uh, I, I hope that, you know, all the immigrants that come here will be legal immigrants. We don't want the illegal element um, because in, it's from the get-go breaking the law if they're not entering the country at the border legally and uh, I know there's a lot of issues surrounding that that I don't have the answer to those problems um, I I am a praying uh, faith-filled person and I pray for you as our our group of commissioners um, for you to have wisdom and, and really think about what your choices are for the children that are coming up behind us. It's a big responsibility. And, uh, and I'll be praying for you and a lot of other people too to, to you know, God go with you and, and make good choices for all of us. We're depending on you. Thank you very much, Mary. Hey, Cheryl, you, Prince. 
Bonnie Kellogg. Here comes Bonnie. Hi, I'm Bonnie Kellogg. I live at 512 South Railway Road, North Muskegon. I'm a registered nurse for 40 years plus, and I served in the U.S. Army, and I'm against sanctuary cities, and here's why. Number one, it's lawless. Why is everyone turning their back on the laws? Who doesn't believe in national sovereignty and national security? There's no accountability, they aren't accountable, and government is not accountable. So everyone sleeps good, but everything gets turned inside out. We have duties to our own poor and needy. This will put an extra burden on our health care, particularly the elderly people. When you come legally, you're vetted. There's a process, just like when you go to McDonald's. You can't rush to the front of the line. You can't run over the counter and grab a hamburger, or you get the heck out. There's approved channels for people to go through, including my parents, who are both immigrants. Thank you very much. And then next I have Jennifer uh, Gerzola. My name is Rachel Zorn. I live at 1948 Belmont. I support Commissioner um, Holy Wright's resolution to recognize Muskegon as a welcoming county to all immigrants regardless of status. This is an important initiative as uninformed fear-mongering rhetoric regarding immigrant communities and their statuses continues to intensify and divide the community. Half the stuff I'm hearing isn't even true. Half the stuff that people are afraid of and and the things people are mentioning, like if there if we become a welcoming community, that doesn't mean there's gonna be this mass infiltration of illegals in Muskegon. All it means is that we're 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 welcoming people. That people that are already here, people that are going to your businesses, people that are in your classrooms, people that already live in this community. Um as somebody who has uh, gone through this from personal experience, has consultations with lawyers, and um, is um, uh, educated in U.S. Uh, CIS policies, um, somebody that's illegal isn't just somebody that crossed the border. Anybody that's, that resides within the United States has paid $4,000, hired a lawyer, submitted their application for a green card, that, and then that application is currently pending or is going through government, ba government backlog is still here illegally. Anybody that's gone through a student, that's here on a student visa, a work visa, a travel visa, and they're here one day past the date that they're not supposed to be here anymore, they're here illegally, even if they started a more permanent green card process. <coughs> the federal government sets a cap on the number of green cards it distributes per country per year. As Mexico is a neighboring country, there are many applicants from Mexico. Oh, I'm taking a lot of time. Um, so there, there's many people that are, that are already here. Um, uh, dang. Um, there, there's nothing else people can do. Once they already start the green card process, they're here. They can't leave. They can't go back to their home country. They're here. Um, <laughs> Next, I have Lin Linda Dykstra and then Melinda Reese Hegel. Uh, my name is Jennifer Zaragoza, 1319 Jefferson Street. Uh, I'm here to support um, Welcoming Town. Um, my comments will be very different than most people because I came here somewhat prepared and then I entered the room and I was scared. Uh, so it was, uh, it's, it's been really strange sitting here. I was born in 1990 and I'm excited to grow into my further mature years. I'm excited to, for the future, and respectfully the future of Muskegon. Standing right outside of this room at 335 has been one of the most frightening moments that I've lived, that has happened while I've lived here in Muskegon. Um, the feeling is not okay. Um, the awful, heavily racist comments that I heard on the elevator, as soon as the elevator doors opened up, uh, sunk my soul. They, um, they made me freeze in disbelief that this room could be full of hate and bluntly speaking about how they would harm a person that looked different or that was from a different area or place in the world. My skin may be a different tone and I, I have the opportunity to still speak my native language, 
Uh, there shouldn't be anything scary about a person who looks different. I'm still a human being with the same right to breathe this air and not live in fear. And I want to feel welcome here where I live. And I want everyone else to feel welcome. There shouldn't, there shouldn't be a reason why that can't be possible. Thank you. Hi, I've been here before. I see the same faces. I thank you for the work you're doing. Uh, I've done a little research before coming over today, and uh, one of the things that I found, oh, I didn't give you my address, 16201 Harbor Point Drive. One of the things I found out is that more and more cities and counties are going to welcoming county, but what we're finding is that that's the first step toward the sanctuary city <coughs> or county. And when you talk about uh, not honoring ICE and the police and the sheriff, uh, that helps me very clearly understand that that's kind of the direction that you're wanting to go. My own sense is that Muskegon is a very welcoming community. I have found it nothing other than that, including with all of you, even when we've disagreed. However, um, I'm wondering why you're bringing up this issue. I know you don't answer questions. I'm wondering why you bring up this issue when there are so many other relevant and important issues uh, like the lady who can't get her home repaired. Uh, that to me is a pressing issue. This is not a pressing issue. We are a welcoming community. From my perspective, we are creating a non-existent issue, and I don't understand why. The other thing is, um, I was a little mystified about how it got closed down the way it did, because from my perspective beforehand, when I have met with all of you, you've been very transparent, you've been very forthright, and so what happened today was really um, mystifying. And so I agree with the person who indicated that, you know, this is a really larger issue, and we in fact need, as the people, the citizens, to be involved. This is not a closed door issue. Thank you very much. Thank you. Melinda Reese Pago, 6233rd Street, Holton, Michigan. Uh, I don't need to reiterate and be redundant on how I feel. I'm sure the whole board probably knows how I feel about this. There's absolutely no way you can o overrule the United States Constitution. I have Native American and Irish roots. I have half of my family that were already here before all of the immigrants came, then I have family that came legally. We need to uphold legalism only. I'm gonna change courses here and go back to a few weeks ago we had the marijuana deal here presented for the DB3 for the 800,000, almost $800,000 land that you want to sell. And the gentleman supervisor from Dalton Township spoke and said that he had everything already in place. I want to let you all know what I already knew that you failed to research or document and verify that he was being truthful. I went the very next morning and found out that those steps had not been put in place yet. They are not in place right now, and they will be put in place because their board will approve it, but it has not been done yet. But let me tell you that that has an appeals process, and I will fully try to appeal that. So you might want to not jump the gun and sell that property yet. That has happened already in my own township. It was petitioned, and now they cannot bring these marijuana facilities in here that they promised. It's a, a serious issue. So you have a commissioner that wants to bring in all these illegal immigrants. You have the county board wants to sell 110 acres to the m biggest marijuana facility in the state of Michigan. We're promoting lawlessness and anarchy. What's gonna happen to the taxpayers that are here? already that are here legally and I have friends that have been through the naturalization process to be citizens it's a it's a slap in their face there's a process in place and we need to follow that thank you oh Michael Gulliver Toby Heidenbrand. Come here. Toby Heidenbrand. Toby 
Michael Gulliver, 2018 South Daniel. Here is because I will um, get to some people that I've worked with and um, after I quit working with them, they ended up uh, being deported. I didn't know how to get a hold of them. I asked, you know, what happened? Their car, they left it here. Their clothes, they left it here. Television set, they left it here. Um, Sorry. Could you talk into the mic so we can hear better? Thank you. So their crime was uh, crossing a desert to get a job, and um, you know, and there, I know there's some people that are worried, you know, they have to compete because they have to get out of bed to get a job. Um, so um, it's about good people and welcoming people. I think is a great thing. I know I I did a little bit of studying on uh, um, sanctuary cities. And it's not that the police have to not follow ICE at all. It's just that every interaction doesn't need to necessarily report and being reported to ICE to be deported. And um, let's face it, we live in Muskegon. It's kind of a dicey town. <laughs> Stuff happens. Um, and if something happened to anybody in this room, okay, and I saw it happen, I like to think that I could call the police, you know, and I'd like to stay with you until the police came or first responders, and then I'd like to tell police what happened to you so that you get justice and the best can happen to you. Um, if I saw something happen to somebody here, and I was afraid that if I called the police or stayed with you that I might get picked up by the, I might not be able to do it. Angelina Velder. Angelina. Lila Rizzo Belsar. Don and Jean Richards. How about William Randall? Hello, I'm Reverend William Randall, 1800 Fenner Road. And I'm glad to be able to express myself to you. I'm a pastor in Eggleston Township and I'm the chaplain at the Muskegon Rescue Mission, and I'm chairman of National Day of Prayer for Muskegon County. And I uh, hope and pray that you will want to be ruling according to the law and not according to a rebellious act of your own. I consider this initiative that is being presented as an act of rebellion against the uh, the laws of immigration laws that have been passed by Congress, and also there are uh, uh, official ways of enforcing the law and assisting the local communities. And Muskegon County should ac accept any help they could get to enforce the laws and to stop illegal activity. So I'm hoping that you will do that. Now you are all influential people in this community besides being on this commission. You've been in part of different businesses and so forth. And you've ruled and you've run your businesses according to rules and laws. So why can't the county be run according to the laws of our nation instead of an act of rebellion on your part? I'm asking you to change your thinking if, that's, if you're all in favor of that. Uh, now I want to ask, uh, when you make laws here for Muskegon County, don't you hope that people will live according to them? When you tell them you have to mow a, a lawn that, that's growing up and is an a eyesore, don't you hope that the people will mow it like they're supposed to? Well then shouldn't you uh, uh, ex accept the laws that are made by the country? And would you want someone pitching a tent in your backyard? I'm sure you would call someone and have them evicted. Thank so, you, Mr. Randall. Same thing for people coming in. Right? Yeah, like, Can you take them up? Can you take them up? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
what would Jesus do? That is great. Right, uh, Pastor, what would Jesus do? Jesus, what would Jesus do? Can get closer to the mic. No, what would Jesus do? Uh, 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 2493 with Kraken. And I lived here all my life. And we don't need a sanctuary county. We have a constitution already in place, and no need to double down on what's in place. If people come here legally and obey the laws, we wouldn't be having this meeting. If things, if this commission would make it a mission to stick to the constitution, we wouldn't be having this meeting. What we need are people who will assimilate to our constitution, be taught American culture. They left their country behind because of their oppression in their country. People come here for new life and new laws. Learn them as soon as possible. We should be putting money into educating the ones that come to assimilate to our laws and culture, not teach us their culture. Just look at California. Come the homeless people pooping everywhere, everywhere needles, everywhere immigrants committing crimes and going unpunished. Don't tell me that won't happen here because it is all over the country. We should be a county that is like our constitution, not a county who ignores it. Put the citizens of Muskegon first. There are programs in place already for these immigrants. Start using them. We don't have to be like other counties. We need to be a constitutional county that leads. I have never owned a gun for the first time in my life. I feel like buying a gun. Because if this goes through, I feel unsafe in a county where I've lived all my life. Thank you. My name is Richard Passerell, and I live at 2541 Fountain Street, Muskegon. Much of what I had to say has been hashed over the last hour and a half, and I'm not going to bore you with going through it. I'm going to capsulize three ideas. One, a reminder, and the reminder is that you are a political unit of the state of Michigan, not a theocratic unit, a political unit. 